it's a part of the government's uh, fuel saving uh, strategy for uh, the economy because we're using <laughs> petrol and you're going to be using electric. Right. Welcome to this video. Today we're having a bit of a clean up, spring clean, and we're giving this a bit of a clean up too. Water your mushrooms. These are dried out, ones that were dried on the tree. And what I'm going to do is put a whole lot into the blender. Maybe I'll put that there on the side and see how much I can make it grow. And I'm going to add some water to it too, just to uh, allow it to mix up. What a pulse! There we go. Tied a bit of string around the outside, and that yellow on my fingers is actually turmeric. I'm not a smoker, it's turmeric. <laughs> okay, that should hold the weight of it now, hopefully. I'll go with the big one first. I'm sure some of the finer bits are going to pass through there, but uh, the idea is to just do that bit first. Give it a good slosh around and see how much we can get out of there. I've got the lion's share of it out of there. Yeah, the colouration of the water is uh, obviously got spores in too, but I'm going to keep that water. I'm going to use that as well. This is a bit of native bush behind the old farmhouse, and it's got a lot of dead logs lying around because they just fall over and some of them actually have water mushrooms growing on them but some don't so I'm going to find one that doesn't and uh, try to introduce just by pouring the fluid that's left over here's a good log right down here look this is a tree that's fallen over that's a beauty one that'll be perfect big log down there put some cuts try to also generate some sawdust and stuff that's a, that's a big one. There's also another dead standing one, that one there too. Right there as well. That looks good. Nice and damp. That should do it. Put our water on that. There's all our sawdust. I'm putting just a tiny little bit of this grain. You can see the mycelium in it. Not a lot because I'm using the rest for a bucket. This is uh, stuff I bought. Oh, that's going on. That's working. I'll do the whole log. I've pretty much got most of the log. So, I've got a bit left over. Look at all these grains in here. The birds might come and pick these. So that's why I'm poking them down there so they can't get them. They might come and feed off them, you know, take them away. And then transport them somewhere else. But get some of the gaps. We got most of them down in the wood. Away from the birds. Got a big pot of water going. The jug at the same time. These beautiful shavings. Just nice and fresh. I'm thinking the sawdust is probably going to go down rather than up, so I've filled up as much as I can. Or maybe it expands and goes up. We'll find out in a minute. Just going to sterilise it. Make it nice and wet too. It's going to take a long time for that to cool down. Man, it smells nice. It smells like fresh pine. Mmm, that smells good. It's a really nice smell come off that. Mmm, real nice. A bit more boiling water. Get that side. Get to every bit of it. I've got this bucket here, and I've had a bit of a play around with my holes in it. I've got some that are that high, a stack of them, but I've also got down the side here just to test what it's like growing them low. I think the mushroom is probably going to hang down a bit. Uh, clean the inside pretty good. Not real flash, but this stuff here has all been well and truly heated up like boiling water. It'll be hot on the inside still to get the sawdust wet and also get rid of any contamination. So that's the first lot of that stuff there. 
And I guess when you get a little bit high, I want to keep the first lot of holes. I think it'll probably sink down after a while. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe it doesn't. And uh, put my grain. There's my mycelium there. I've bought this grain spawned from Mycelogic. So you can see it's already starting to go a bit white. You can see the mycelium there. And you're going to sprinkle over the first lot a bit. And work it in. Spread around a bit. And then some more of this stuff on top. And keep on going with layers until I get to the top. This is still very warm, but I did it like five hours ago. It still kept the heat in it. Some more there. Some more grain. And pop our top on top there. It's Friday today, the 22nd of September, the day that the Queen died. God save the King. 2022. What year? It's our Mitre 10 bucket. It's on the 5th. And this is our. Oh, it's a bit more heavier, that one. Our Bunnings bucket. I think the Bunnings bucket's a little bit bigger. Well, maybe not. Maybe same size. Tell us what's cooking today, Damo. Well, it's capskin, onion, celery, nice red deer mince. Oh, red deer mince. Onion, mm. chuck some garlic, kikoman, soy sauce. A little bit of this. Oh, yeah. I use that. White vinegar. I use that. Yep. Yep. Oh, that smells good. Just a bit of them. Are you can take some stuff to eat in the forestry day while we're pig hunting. Probably a good, idea, good idea. Take a little bit to take with you, just to have. Yeah. Probably munch on the way home or something. Yeah. Be quite good. Yeah. Didn't even think of that, eh? Yeah, you'll be hungry at the end of today's hunt. Yeah, I'll be starving. Yeah, yeah. What else is that? What's going there, bro? Paprika. Oh, yeah, the old paprika. Is it smoked paprika or just straight? Um, I'm not sure what this one is. It's just lovely that stuff, eh? I'll put on anything. It's really good on venison. Oh yeah. The machine here, Damo, he's smashing it. Oh, That's the old uh, swing. Man, it's, it's a hard one, that one. It's like a little leverage under it, eh? Yeah, a bit of leverage. You'll get it. Super Duck thinks she can help, but she can't do any help at all. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Oh. Gotta watch out for those bits coming flying at you. Oh no! Oh no, oh no, there's our sledgy. Bound to happen, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucked yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, bro. Good part to record there, bro. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> All the others were four, huh? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. smashed this one off nicely. He smashed this one off nicely. And then he fucked the sledgy, he's still got one to go. Oh, you they, know, really? Um, to make another handle for that, it's just about not worth it because you've got to, well you can, but you've got to be real masterful to do that. Well, eh? I can do it, I can do it, but they, they're so bloody expensive by the handles, it's almost just you're the same bastard. price to buy a new one, eh? Fucking oh, bastard. you got a sledgy on there, there, uh, <laughs> Redneck Joe? We're halfway, halfway there. Come on, Redneck Joe, where's your sledgy, mate? You got one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> Yep, sweet as bro, awesome. Again, I'm adding boiling water to the shavings. Gonna fill that right up with a couple of these. What are we gonna start with? Just sprinkle that around like this. I'm trying to get it all mixed up. Get it all mixed in. Going on with that. Some more spores. This is actually seal the bucket. That is going to be hopefully all your mushrooms that will take a lot longer to propagate than the other ones. Just a whiteboard marker so we can take it off. 13. 
22. This is the mushroom room. There's my last wood here, and the ones I did with Cam. Get a place this bit on top. This one's probably going to take a lot longer to to grow than these guys that already had uh, spawn that had already started to uh, move, like that white stuff in it. Mycelium. This one's going to take a lot longer if it's even going to work, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. The monarch butterflies have been laying eggs in my swan plants, and what I want to get from them, if I can, and there's some just here still, the last of the seeds actually, that's what I wanted, was to get these seeds here. Right there. Look at them. There's an earwig living in there. Oh a family of earwigs living in there. Sorry guys, were you feeding on the seeds? Well, I'm gonna plant those out. An old random collection of pots. You can actually get these free at Mitre 10. They have them outside. They have containers that people have used and bought plants and they've returned. So they don't cost anything. So you can really, for the price of nothing, uh, make something that's got value. Because everybody likes monarch butterflies. And you could probably go and get some free containers, get a bit of dirt somewhere. Get some seed, even if to buy the seed if you don't have seed like me from last year. And grow your own swan plants. Well... We've got a total of 14 pots to seed up. Nice and warm in the glass house. I reckon I'm going to stick a couple on each pot. Because they don't always take. Let's put them on the surface here. Bit of a dab, bit of a cover, done. That's one. How easy is that? Too easy. And you can always like pull one out and prick it out if you've got two. They both come up and plant it somewhere else. Just ensures that we've got a high chance of getting a yield I suppose because they didn't cost anything these seeds I might uh, just save the rest for my mate Cora I don't know if she's got any seeds or not because she likes to grow swarm plants see my lilies I planted starting to poke their head out this one's come up quite a bit we ended up with 15 in total in the end got one extra pot down there my friend Heck said that if I put the uh, Cape Gooseberry in the glass house it'll do well I thought it wouldn't, but actually, it's starting to take off now. So he was right. Apparently his dad used to grow one under a, a willow tree. And it did really well. Create that glass house effect, and it's doing well here. Good going. Put the lilies a bit of water. And keep super duck out of the glass house, mate. You're not coming in. You can't count your chickens before they hatch, meaning those seeds may not come up. But if some do, what I've got is... Well, I've got some swan plants, but also got some little gifts so I can give to people. Someone comes around to visit you or go to someone's house. Who doesn't want a wee pot plant of a swan plant that's already, like, growing? Great gift. I think it'll be uh, probably about six to eight weeks before we really know. She really doesn't want to go down to the other ducks. She actually doesn't like the other ducks. But I want to get her impregnated because she's actually our super duck. It's the biggest female I've had, and even though she's only five months old, by well now she should be able to get, get uh, fertile eggs. She hasn't started laying eggs yet, but she will soon. Anyway, it's pretty windy out here, but hopefully we can get it to get uh, serviced by one of my drakes. Because I want to keep them going. She can hear the other ducks, but no, nah, she thinks she's human. Okay, mate, come on. Let's see what's going to go in here. Here we go. Here you go, super duck. There you go, there's a pond for you. She's probably going to try and run back home. She's going to hang around me. You guys eating your feet already? Look how big super duck is. Nice well, feet in here still. They've still got feet. There's Super Duck over there. Feeding here still. The Super Duck's not too worried. She's enjoying the pond. These guys got feed. They just come up and say good day to me. The old black bat girl hanging around for something. What do you want, mate? You after duck eggs? So what's the story? Eh? Hey? Well, there's Super Duck. Looks like she's going to get mated pretty quick with. It's all on. The drake's onto her. She's never had a drake before. Sorry, Super Duck. Sorry, mate. 
this is what it's all about. Springtime, you know, you've got to make more ducks. This is a bigger drake, I'd rather this guy here. This is only a small one. This is a more superior one. Don't really want this one to mate, I'd rather the bigger guy get a bigger drake. It comes to me for help. Here comes the bigger drake to knock the other drake off. Poor old super duck's getting raped. He's coming in to me for help, but I can't help you, mate. This is what you come down here for. Sorry. Yeah, that feeder must have jammed up. That's why they weren't getting tucker out of it. Oh, they're getting tucker out of it now. Old super duck trying to get away. That bigger drake should have a crack. This young drake is useless at mating. She's such a big female, she's actually bigger than the drake. It's gonna make noise. Stop pulling the bloody feathers out of Super Duck, you bastard. It's not going very well so far, is it? Not going well at all. Oh, mate, did you get a bit hammered, did you? No, didn't like that, did you? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, she's hiding under my legs. Sorry, Super Duck. Yeah, you can't gut me sleeve. I know you'd like to disappear up there, but you can't, mate. It's a hard old world out there. Got to pay the rent somehow, don't you? Get some baby ducklings for me. All the ones incubate aren't hatching out. The rain's coming, and uh, Super Duck has uh, still got the stuck trying to mate with it. But I'm not going to get wet, and uh, she can follow me back up to the house. Old oh, mate, six dry is pretty powerful, but. I think it won't follow me all the way. It's still behind me. Both of them. Good old super duck. It's a bit of a climb to the hill, but she wants to go home. Let's put the hammer down, super duck. Rain's coming. I'm not waiting for you, mate. Old oh, mate's giving up on your super duck. I'm not carrying you back, mate. You can come. Come on. Dawn's coming. Come on, super duck. Come on. I'm not waiting for you, I don't want to get wet. The rain's coming, I want to get a shirt on. Hopefully she can uh, make it back by herself and under the gate. Duck, 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 duck. She's pretty tired. Uh, it failed, I'll try again when the wheels a bit better. We didn't get a mate in that time. Hopefully she can work out to go underneath the gate. Duck, 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 come on. Let's see if she can go under the gate. She gonna work that out? Nah, she hasn't. She's gone past it. Bloody hell. Well, she's just a duck, I suppose, after all. Going down by the sheep, the sheep paddock. Now the rain's coming down. Ah, she got through the fence. Good one. Where's your mate gone, ducky, eh? Don't worry, she's coming. She's coming. I'm in the house truck now, and I can see through the window that Super Duck is coming back to ducky. Made it home. Right, good time to get out of the rain. What I want to do now is bottle the apple cider vinegar that I made on the 8th of June and I've been using some of it already that one there I've taken some out of but these other two have got plenty in still now my jars are nice and clean the first thing I do is I'm going to save the mother for making more apple cider vinegar that'll be sitting on the top there that's the stuff around here and it's also on the bottom too you can see this around the apple this here that's what we want take this off and it's sitting on the top as well. That's what I want. That. I'm gonna save that. Pop it in here. We can use that next time. Well, this has got a really good skin on this one. Look at that there. Wow. Mm hmm. Oh, we got the lion's share of it. Still quite a bit there. Might get it in three pieces if we're lucky. I might even get it in two pieces. Okay, three pieces. Nice, and that smells just like apple cider vinegar. That's because it is apple cider vinegar. 
So that culture will start another apple cider vinegar, but we can also use these apples as well to do that. I'm just going to pop that on for now. Come back to that later. Another clean one. Got my doubled up cheesecloth. Got that. Poker on top. There's a nice wee filter to gather any more of the mother. Not we'll get pouring. Ooh, smells good. Pure, organic apple cider vinegar. Now you possibly might remember when I was making this, so I didn't actually use sugar added because they were tree ripened apples and they had a huge sugar content, like they've been on the tree. We only took them off in July. And also, instead of using sugar, I used our own wild honey. But we had young Zach came round and he harvested that for us and gave me some, which I kept. So I want to try each batch, because they've all got a separate amount, and see how they all taste. This is straight apple cider vinegar. Oh, mate. It doesn't taste like the one that shops. That's really good vinegar. Well, there we have the first one of my very first batch I've ever made of apple cider vinegar. Look at the colour of it. It's absolutely really got a beautiful. I'm quite stoked about this actually. I've been living on this orchard for 15 years and I've never ever made it. And one of you guys, one of my subscribers said, why don't you make apple cider vinegar? And if that was you, comment below because I want to say thank you to you. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I'll be doing it from now on forever. And it's been a successful Right, we'll canter the rest off and see how many jars we get. We ended up with three full jars and one little baby jar, which I'm just trying to get the last strips out now. The lighter colour one uh, had less bite, this had more bite, and I like the bite. Uh, so from three jars, we got three and a little bit left over. So a lot of work, but I normally buy this stuff and I won't be buying it anymore, I'll be using my own. And this here would probably last me, I would say, two weeks. Go through that, so there's a hmm, month and a half supply of apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to get more apples and keep making it. Apples aren't in season now, but I know where I can get them locally at a really, really reasonable price. Someone that has got an orchard down the road that put them in a cool store, so that's what I'll be doing in the future. Right, the other things I did uh, for the first time was I bottled apples, and I also made some sauerkraut, and... I've had a wee sneaky look at the sauerkraut about three weeks ago and it looked like the top was starting to go off a little bit. I don't think that matters so long as the stuff underneath is good. But I'm going to go outside now and check that because that's something else which is new to me. I've never done it before. And sauerkraut's a tough one, but let's see how it went. I've got my fork and I've got my rain hat because today, one minute it's sunny, next minute, next minute, clouds. Look. This but the sky's fine and then you hit this line here and it's just like there's a storm going up there in the mountains. That's where we hunt. That's where I do my pig hunting. The wasabi has been a raging success. It really has and I put so much work into making this planter box. And I've just had this sitting up so the bees can get in there and pollinate it. Which they've been doing. The flowers. It's looking really, really good this. Real healthy plants. These came from pure wasabi in Christchurch. They're his own strain. They're not my strain. We'll take this leaf out. We don't want leaves it are going yellow so we just pull that right out good and it's gone and you can see we're going to get some seed off this there'll be little seeds in there later on this year for my uh, patrons if you want a plant or you want seed contact me it won't cost you anything i'll gift you a cutting or actually a plant or seed if i can i'll have some there so no cost to you guys right let's see what's uh, going to be like here i've got the sauerkraut outside because it was fermenting and it was bubbling over and having a look at it, hmm, there we go. Well, it looks brown at the top, looks dodgy, but it looks okay down here. So let's just crank one open and test it. I'm not feeling too confident about this, guys. Oh, oh dear. Okay. That's mouldy. That smells like rotten cabbage. And the top looks like rotten cabbage. I've got a feeling that my sauerkraut has failed. 
I'll take this off. I'm going to need uh, two hands for this. I've got to tell you, it doesn't smell flash. Mm, this is a bit of a disappointment. Mm, bit of a dis looks all right. Oh fuck! I don't know. <laughs> failed. I failed. No, oh, that's a shame. Two out of three. I still got the apples. Oh, well, hopefully next time I get a better. I wish I hadn't even tested that because now I've got the taste of ass in my mouth. Whatever that tastes like. It tastes like rotten. Oh man. That could make you sick. Probably shouldn't even have it in my mouth. I might go and rinse my mouth out with apple cider vinegar. That bird, that cabbage, like that was horrid. <laughs> the man that never made a mistake, never made anything at all. I'm going to stick to that one for now. That was a, that was a stuff up. Mm. Oh. Imagine what it's like for our ancestors that really relied on that hard work for their food for the winter and it goes rotten. They would literally starve. Mm. Apple cider vinegar though, that's a raging success. So we'll concentrate on the positive. Right, let's go and see how the apples went. I stored the apples out in the house truck because I thought if they don't seal properly, which they may not because I've never done preserving before ever, the worst that can happen is they can turn into apple cider vinegar. So if we see any bubbles in there, then I guess there would be a possibility they are fermenting. But I don't know. Because uh, I did those also in July, but later. Okay, my lovelies. How did you go? I'm a bit nervous. I have to... Okay, let's look at this here. Oh, it looks a bit dark, doesn't it? Any bubbles going on there? I could have these in my porridge if they worked out good. There's no bubbles, is there? Oh, let's crank it open. I didn't write on this one, I don't know why. Well, that's definitely sealed. I'm not going to get that with my finger. Bloody rain's coming again. This one's actually sealed good. So much, in fact, I don't know if I can get this top off. Is there a trick? All you ladies that make preserving stuff on that, we go, nah, Clay, you're supposed to use a screwdriver or you're I don't know how to get that off. One thing I do know is if I can't get it off, it must have sealed pretty tight. That must be pretty good the side there. Oh, there's a couple of bubbles here, but how, how do you get it off? Do you use a can opener? I'd like a tin opener like this. There we go. Oh, it smells like apple. It smells fresh. It smells good. But is it good? It's a bit dark. Oh, <laughs> that worked. Okay, two out of three. Perfect. That's fine. It just looks dark. I thought it'd be. Mm. I'm gonna make some um some porridge now because I love apple on porridge. That's sweet too. Tree ripened apples. Only picked in July. Okay, well we've got um, we've got a few more here. Well, that one's slightly different colour, is it? I left the skins on. I know people take the skins off, but to me, all the goodness is in um, the skins, eh? So we've got quite a few of those, which are going to be um, like tucker until there's apples again. So that was worth it. I don't so, feel so bad now about the cabbage being rotten. Two out of three. I want to make sauerkraut now. I've got the challenge. The challenge is on. At least this is the first time I've done this. At least I didn't stuff this up. Rolled oats are good tucker. I always clean them because the plant produces 
something to keep insects away, which is toxic to insects. And to us, it can just irritate our bowel a bit sometimes. So I'll do that until the water goes clear. I do the same with rice too. Just about clear now, almost there. So we've done the porridge with gojo berries dried and strawberries frozen. The colour of the apple doesn't look very appetising, does it? But they tasted good in the jar and I'm sure they're going to taste good in the porridge too. Let's uh, try a bit of that. I don't think my uh, apple looks very appetising, but how does it taste? Oh, it's good. Mmm. Sweet. So porridge, staple for many children in New Zealand growing up. Us kids, we used to have porridge with cream and brown sugar when we lived on the farm. Uh, today I'm um, a little, uh, no brown sugar and just some bits of, bits of fruit and apple from my orchard. I think the uh, the Scottish, they, that's their staple too, similar to us, maybe the Irish as well. And they used to have it before they go to war, like a big feet of porridge because it would give them strength, so the story goes. Mm. We got a fresh drop of snow last night, we can feel it too. About three hours ago there was even more, it's starting to burn off now. The whole hill was powdered early this morning, even a smidgen on Mount Campbell. Even George has got his puffy Katmandu jacket on, it's so cold. <laughs> Bit nippy, eh? Were you cold in the house truck last night? Nah. Nah? Nah, toasty as. Were you? Did you yeah. have the fire going? Nah. Nah? Nah, just got a mean sleeping bag. Oh uh, yeah. Morning boys and girls. Uh, one of you commented on where I planted my pomegranates and I couldn't agree more. Hey, bro, have a look at this. We'll do that in a minute. I just wanted to show you something someone sh uh, shared with us, which I thought was a really valid point and I never thought of. So, I'm going to take that on. This is the beauty of having subscribers that know more about gardening than me. What do you reckon is wrong about where I put my three pomegranates and where I was going to put my other six? Someone commented this morning, I thought it was really, really valid, eh? Too close together, or? well, they are too close together too, but it's not that it's it's that they grow to like 12 up to 12 feet tall. And there's our vegetable garden. Oh, yeah. So, what's going to happen is two things they're too close together, they're going to shade the garden. The other thing is, he said, is they're going to draw the nutrients out of the ground for our vegetables, they suck everything out. Do they? Yeah, yeah, I never thought of that because uh, I'm not a gardener's bumhole. <laughs> and um, and he's an arborist, he just kills things, he just cuts stuff down, I just chop them. he chops them. <laughs> Uh, so um, I reckon that I'm going to, because I've only just put them in there, so they'll come out fine, eh? I'm going to think of yeah, a smarter one. I want to thank that person that made that comment and any of you other people on the channel that, which will be probably 90% of you know more about gardening than me, and George for that matter, let us know because uh, that's really valuable information, eh? And I reckon what I'll do, George, is take this fence right out and bring the garden out to here and use this space, you know? Because you can grow vegetables in this. There's no reason why this couldn't be another bed down here, is it? Yeah. That'll probably help because we'll have to take the fence out anyway to yeah. properly pull out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I've also, guys, I bought myself a Waratah puller. I've oh, been fat. Yeah, yeah, I bought one. <laughs> uh, a lot of you uh, helped me there too and said you could buy them on Trade Me. Well, I went into CRT and they're not cheap, but I thought I've got so many jobs around the place to do, so we'll pull these out. Uh, and um, get stuck into that today, I think, because um, yeah, this man. is this is a bit of an area. Um, Take it off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, make... You had a coffee this morning, bud? Yeah, just had one. I went and got some A2 cream from the... Oh, from, from the fr Marpa Fruit and Veg Shop? No, nah, a different one. But now nah, I got Don't the know. A2 cream, eh? Holy... So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah, and it's better for you too. <laughs> yeah, it's yummy. Yeah, yeah, bloody good. Did you have porridge this morning? No, I haven't eaten yet. Yeah, I, I had porridge, eh? Oh, man. Yeah. I had porridge with our, our apples that um, we stewed. Uh, well, I stewed. You went here, we did that. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, that's today's Mish guy. Um, if you want to help, you can. If you don't, that's cool too. But that's what I want to get done today. Yeah, is smash it. This, yep. Yeah. You've been here a wee while now, eh? Looks like yeah. you've, you've moved in. You, you, can, you can stay <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> uh, are you going to be around for the next for this weekend coming up or not? Um, Rob, most likely. Oh, cool, because we'll do yeah. that pig hunt again, eh? Yeah, man. And take another person who's got some experience and see if we can catch that pig. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Go home with some meat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if we catch a pig, because I'm my freeze is full right now, eh? Yeah, man. Yeah, so if we get a pig, you can take the whole pig home. Then I can go home just completely all all goals ticked off. Well, you can completely actually content. You can, and, and if we get a pig, Damo can butcher it too, because I've taught him how to do that. Yeah. So that'll be really, really, really cool. If we, if we get a decent pig, he can do that. Yeah, I've I've got a good full freezer right now. 
lucky. Yeah, I, I am lucky. Well, it's not like it just um, falls in there. You do actually nah. work to get it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. Oh, these doggies need a walk. Hello, Po. Hello, Bigsy. Now, how are you, Pace? You were a bit sore the other day after your hunt. Have you healed up? You look like you're 100% back to normal again. You're 110% actually. You're a normal manic state. Hey, you good boy? Hey, you squeaky. And you stay there for now. Bigsy, Po. It's okay, you're going for a walk. Uh, one of you guys commented that it was not fair that I made them wait for their food. And I should think about that. And you're completely wrong, actually. Uh, you do make your dog wait for everything. These are dogs, they're not humans. They've got a high prey drive. If you'd ever seen these dogs uh, having a fight among themselves, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. They are like wolves. They look like your household pet. And for that, that actually point in alone, your household pet has got the same DNA as a wolf. It varies about 0.2% um, from his nose to his bum hole. What goes on the side is pretty much the same DNA, and that includes his thinking. So they have that layer of thinking. Teaching your dog that you're the boss is paramount if you want to have full control all the time. Making him wait for his food, it simulates what would go on the pack where the alpha dog eats first and they are waiting and they get to eat the leftovers. That ensures the dog knows his place where he is. The dog is happier know, knowing where he is in his place. He's a lot more confident and it's the same with raising your children. If your kids have boundaries that they know they can't go past, if you set them firm, your children will grow up happy and well balanced too. It's only when the parents change the boundaries. One mum says, oh, I know you can eat ice cream, and dad says you can't, and it confuses the kid. These guys know that I'm the boss, and they eat when I say, or well, most of the time if I'm lucky, they toilet on command, they drink on command. That way I don't have a dog that runs into the neighbor's paddock and jumps on his sheep. I can call him back, and it constantly means keeping that, that power at play in the right place. I'm the boss, I'm the master, they're the dogs. And that's the way it is. Uh, and if anybody has a problem with that, the way I'm training, then what I'll say to you is what you're doing is you're, you're putting your human emotions onto them. These aren't people, these aren't humans, these are dogs. And you've got to keep remembering that. As beautiful as they are, as much as I love them, I have seen them tear bits off each other. If, if I run over Pace in a truck, if I knock him with a truck and he starts crying on the ground, arr, 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 which he probably won't because he's smart, even though he could be uh, ruptured on the inside. If he starts going like that, the first thing will happen is Big Z and Poe will jump on top of him and they'll try and kill him to finish him off. They won't go like human, oh, Pace is hurt, let's help. No, no, they'll go, he's become the weakest link in the pack and instantly they'll try and attack him and it happens. And any of you guys that work on farms or have uh, farm dogs uh, will know what I'm talking about or hunting dogs that have been in a similar situation where you've had uh, a dog injured and crying and other dogs around, you will have experienced that at some time too, no doubt. Okay, Poe, you can come out first. Good girl, Poe. She's hurt her chin. What's going on your chin there, Poe? Yeah, she jumped out of the truck the other day and um, she come down too hard on the ground. I think she, she smacked it. Yeah, Big Z, you're coming out, boy. Good dog, that's a good dog. Good girl, Poe. So she's waiting for the command to jump down. She's not going to jump down until she gets the command. She's not going to run all crazy. Because she's an old dog. She's got the experience, haven't you, mate? Yes, you have. In fact, she's probably just staying here because she wants a bit of love, don't you, Poe? Yeah. yeah, buddy. Yeah, you're getting some too. Bigsy's a lovely boy. Oh, he's a good dog. He's a good dog. I love my dog so much. But I'm also not silly about it. I understand that they are just dogs. I used to really uh, love my dog Bruno, I miss him, broke my heart when he died, but that's part of having a dog, it's part of loving anything or anybody or anything in this life, sooner or later there's going to be tears because sooner or later one of you's going to go, in one form or another, hey Po, we've still got Po here though, yeah, and she's caught so many pigs, you can go now Po, where you go, uh, Bigsy, Bigsy loves to have a, he loves to have a pat and a cuddle every time, you watch this, he'll go straight onto, the, well he'll toilet probably first, Bigsy come, Oh no, he's straight on to here for his pack. There we go. Even before he's going to toilet, got to give me some love. Yeah, there we go. There's a bit of love. Oh, he's a good boy, aren't you? You're a good boy. Yes, you are. He's just a beautiful, beautiful dog, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, we haven't done a lot of hunting this year, have we? We'll get out next weekend again. Yeah, we will. We'll get you back out into the bush, doing what you're bred to do. That's right, boy. 
You're a good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. Damo's really good with the dogs, eh? He loves Bigsy, doesn't he? He loves you. Yes, he does. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. I'm keeping Pace on the rope because Pace has been alphering up on Bigsy. Been trying to uh, have a crack at him, and that's what dogs do when there's two males. The only way I could probably really fix that would be to take uh, your balls out. Yeah, yeah, and that can still happen, so don't uh, think it won't. Right, we'll grab a lead. Get a bit of grass there. Now what I'm thinking about growing my pomegranates is somewhere uh, among the trees here, where trees have died. I've got this row of apple trees. Goes down both ends here. So we've got one gap there, we could plant a tree, where there was an apple tree, put it in the gap. And we've got a gap here where there's actually two trees have uh, come out, so we could put one here, one here, so there's three. Not a bad place to plant. And then we could plant the other three up here. Like one, two, three, that might be better, eh? The old hawk's been circling my ducks. There's some eggs in the duck box. So that duck box or laying box down there, you can see it. It's got uh, some warm eggs and now a duck sitting on. Where you go? Pace, get in. Pace, get in. Pace! I shouldn't have to say that three times, mate. Pace, come here. Oh, there your guts a shark bait. We'll stay in right now, okay? Pace, sit. Stay, 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 stay. Where you go? That's it. You gotta watch this too. That'll do, Big Z. <whistles> poke up, back and poke. Oh, pace. He's fine. He got bruised on that pig the other day. He's not. Nothing wrong with him. Back in. Good boy. All right, let's go. Come on. See the neighbour's lamb in the corner there talking to my lamb. Let's just come up to see it there. It's on the other side of the trough, just hiding. You probably can't see it actually, but it's there. So then get out to his mate. They're quite uh, communal, aren't they, sheep? There he goes, his little head just popping up now. He's a uh, one of a twin. There he goes, a chalet. My sheep or my lamb's a mongrel. With that fresh drop of snow, it's bloody cold right now. Those little guys look okay though in the sun. What Pace is smelling around here, and what Bigsy's just found. Leave it, Pace. Don't touch. It's just here. Those are warm. Those are Pukiko eggs. It's a wee Pukiko nest. Yeah. Don't touch. Leave it. Don't touch. Not for you. Come on. I'm watching you pace. Good boy, Bigsy. Uh, a lot of vets have told me it's not good to give your dogs eggs because they get salmon out of poisoning. How can that be? It's so natural for dogs in the wild to pick up eggs and eat them. They all do. I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to that and I feed my dogs eggs, but I don't let them have eggs that are growing, growing wild. Oh, happy days. The wasabi I planted down here is growing and it survived the floods, I'll show you. Did I say wasabi? I meant to say watercress, but look at this. Look at this. No, you're not going on that. I planted that last year. It didn't take, and now it's growing. Beautiful, beautiful, nice. Probably not quite as healthy as uh, watercress you grow yourself, because there's a lot of runoff here. They can have liver flukes, but that's actually taken. Nice. What do you reckon, Poe? Pretty good, eh? We've had enough rain this year for this to really really get away yeah. it's not a huge crop but it has taken well that's good good to see right now in China they're experiencing horrific drought and here in New Zealand we've got the opposite everything's growing lush China's uh, faced with some real problems massive problems that will affect all of us in the end we don't really hear a lot of the news that comes out of China there's a lot of stuff that goes on that never makes it to us but right now the current situation with their drought is so bad and people in Australia are probably going, oh that's a normal summer for us, but the trouble is that China's not adapted for it. Their animal life, their plant life, their whole biodiversity is not built around this sort of drought and it really has had a detrimental effect on those people. There's starvation already, uh, people having to lose their jobs because of the factories having to close down because of the water shortage. 
which goes right across the board. And you might think, hey, get out of there, get back in, don't you touch those eggs. Yeah, first chance he sees me, he's locked back down that Pukeko nest. You might uh, think, oh, well, it's China on here in New Zealand, I'm sweet, but nah. We're all affected by everybody. Right, oh, we're going to take these three out again and we're going to shift them. Damo asked me if I had a couple of cable ties, which I do. They're in my pig hunting bag. <laughs> this is one way to fix it. Uh, never seen done before. Good one, Damo. I like the, uh, the idea, mate, but uh, we actually do have a new one of these. The noise you can hear is the agricultural spraying going over at Martin's Orchard over there. Plus an aeroplane flying over there. Sheep just chilling. Gee, that uh, new lamb of ours is growing very, very fast. Ready for the plate, really, isn't he? Or she? It's a she, actually. And this is a new place I'm planting my pomegranates. I've got one here, and as you can see, I've got a, a, a ditch to drain off because they want a good drainage. So I've got one on there. Got another one I'm putting in here. Just going to finish that one off, but more dirt. Got some old potting mix here that's left over from, oh, I think it had tomatoes or something in it, but that's good enough to put the next plant in. A bit of compost, a bit of clay, a bit of everything. Worms in there too, I can see. Well, that's actually good because it's also got some uh, some stones. It's, that'll be good. It's a good mixture, that. This is where I'm going to put my third one. And it overlooks the paddock. Gets the morning sun. It's got apple trees around it, a bit of protection. But I might also put something around it to protect it as well. A bit of compost for old mate. It's pretty clay here. I'm going to have a ditch going down here to drain off too. I think it's important that the plant's got lots of loose around so the roots can grow rather than this tight packed clay. There's little stones in this too so it should be reasonably good for the plant. I'll smack some more soil around there and it'll be sweet as bro. Right I've dug this one in and George has uh, turned up just in time. To dig a drainage ditch. Tear it, buddy. So straight down there, be good. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. That's three down, three to go. Halfway there. Halfway there. Well, Damo's idea was a good bit of Kiwi ingenuity. I've actually taken them off because the way this is set up, you don't want dirt going up inside there. You can bugger it. Oh, here comes Murray with his Toyota Land Cruiser. Nice. This is what the boys have done, everybody pulled out all the mint. I took these uh, plants out because they're in a dumb place. Thank you to the person that cricked me on that. Smashing out all of this stuff. How's your back going George? It's all good eh? You've been working well today buddy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah it's been good. Smashing it out. Yeah. yeah all this stuff. How you doing Damo? Sweet dad. Still alright mate? Yeah sweet dad. You're smashing it brother. Bloody awesome. So it's a real spring clean and I reckon I'm going to do some personal cleaning as well. I reckon this here's going to come off. What do you reckon Damo? Oh, fresh look. Yeah, I mean, look at the fucking state of me. <laughs> yeah. No woman's ever going to find that attractive, are they? Spring clean. Yeah, spring clean. Just, just blokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blokes yeah. on blokes on blokes. Blokes on blokes. <laughs> He's been watching too much of Powerfish. <laughs> have not you? Get the dog. Get the dog. Bloody William Powerfish has got a lot to hunt still for for you, mate. We hey, this. We love him around here. We do love him. Hey, this looks bloody awesome. You can see how much room that we've got extra to plant in there. Yeah. Have you reckon you got most of the uh, the uh, actual the roots out of that stuff? Because one little bit grows again, eh? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Reckon we better plant in there or not? Sorry, huh? We might put the rotary hoe and give it a turnover or yeah, something. Yeah, that's what it needs, eh? Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to fix that weed whacker up. I've got the piece, Damo. Nice. The piece is missing. Going to smack it in. Ooh, that's sexy, isn't it? That's going to work good. I'll put it in there. Yeah. This would probably be a bit more uh, beneficial to the weed whacker than Damo's uh, cable ties. Where'd you get the cable ties idea from? I just seen it pop up the other day and I was like, fuck, that's genius. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on one of those hack videos. I kind of, of... I kind of was looking at the inside of it though and going, oh. Yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, some of those hack videos are good, but it would stuff the inside. Those uh, centrifugal bits that hold into this, would get they get ground off and this, the whole thing will be buggered. Right, we'll fix that up. <laughs> I did that on TikTok and it got like uh, 300,000 views, I think. It's all good to go. Yeah, it'll be good over there, mate. I'm going to clean all the grass around here. 
give it a good chuck rod in here. A whole lot. Well, that smashed that pretty quick. Hmm, nice feeling. And those ears just tidied up on there. Beautiful. This root, it's just filthy with it right through. And I can't really start a veggie garden until I get every piece out because if I don't, it just all grows up. Either mint or twitch. So, I've got to get all this out. The uh, metal has been put in for the driveway. We'll go about there. We need to put this whole fence back up because every dog and every man will be on our, in our garden. There you go, Georgie. <laughs> Lift it up, mate. One of the old fingers of the musician. As you, oh, don't hit yourself in the mush there. That can be serious. So the idea that is to get it straight. Okay, stop there, mate. And just check, your, check, get look down your line. Make sure you're straight that way. I'm looking down the line here. It looks pretty bloody good my way. Yeah, it looks good, eh? So a wee bit, so it could come towards you a little fraction. Just lean that way a bit. Yeah, a bit more that way. Otherwise, is it okay down your line? Yeah. Smack her in, bro. Yeah, looks all good. Yeah, no, bloody good. Bit of uh, air must have been good, eh? Because it's yeah. noisy on the ears. Absolute murder on the worm population. I can see a uh, super duck. Yeah? <laughs> it's a warehouse job, this. It's not flash, but... Ah, it's pulling more out than it's cutting. Might need to adjust it a bit. Oh, no, she's coming away. She's coming away. Here we go. I'll well, carry on and come back to it. Going to tidy. Going to take everything right off and trim this up. Right, that's uh, rough enough for us. <laughs> A little bit uh, different, but I need to have a bit of a uh, shave of the blade and tie that up. Anyway, uh, mm, a bit bit of spring cleaning. I can remember a time once that used to be all just black. Hmm. I haven't done this for a while. I feel like I'm going on a date or I'm playing a gig or uh, going in public. <laughs> Been a long time since I had a shave. Hmm, kind of feels nice. This uh, thing around my neck came from Mace. Mason. That one there. It's got my nephew Mikhail's picture in there when you hold up to the light holding a fish. So I've got Mikhail close to my heart all the time. And the other one's a kayak, which reminds me of my two children. Right now, my daughter Dana's in Calgary teaching white water kayaking. And my son is in Milford Sound doing sea kayaking. How about that fun out? A nice junky jig t-shirt. Get a few of those grey hairs off the clay. It's a beauty, isn't it? An old faithful beanie. Put them on. That's a bit, uh, bit uh, tidier, isn't it? Got the nice junky jig shirt and the beanie. Ready to go fishing now. There's uh, still snow on the mountains, so I won't be silly about it. Have a shirt. And let's go and see what the boys have done with the garden there, because they've been working the whole time. I've been showering, shaving, they've put a gate on that fence, I see, out the window. That's pretty awesome. Move along. Let's see what's going on with this here. Oh, wow. Holy shit, that looks good, bro. Yeah, man. Is that you and Damo, or just you? Damo has the idea of the gate. Eh? Oh, Damo, well, Damo's an <laughs> ideas man. Yeah. Good on him. Well, that was the old gate. Yeah. Oh, you must have had to pull a wire turret and put one in again, did you? Uh, we banged one in there. Yeah, that's great. And then we're like, oh, we can't just close up the whole thing. So that's when we found the gate. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I took it out and then just moved it across a bit. So. Sweet. Yeah. Now it's a... Just need a latch on it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, I like that. You can get a wheelbarrow on there. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Well, next thing we can do is get these weeds out of here so we can use it, but that's brilliant. Yeah. And um, probably put it, there's a mystical head on that one over there. Put this one here just to stop this flopping around. Oh, yeah. because yeah, dogs go straight underneath that. I'll fix that up. That's brilliant, man. Hey, bro, good job. Looks put it there. Good, eh? Yeah, you, you've done really Shut good up. today, man. You've yeah, done really you. good. Good on you, pal. Really appreciate it. Good work. Awesome. Where's Damo? Um, I'm not too sure, probably just in the 
sweet tab, isn't it? Yeah, yep, yeah, cool. Now that I've stopped, I'm kind of like, oh, fuck, I'm a bit tired. You did a good day, man. <laughs> you have a good feed now. Hey, there's plenty of fish and plenty of meat in the freezer. Just help yourself to anything you want. Oh, thank you. Anything you want, just take it. There's venison, there's pork, there's Ooh. snapper in there. Take a whole snapper out and thaw it. Anything. Oh, you don't do fish, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a piece of venison. It's hanging out. You can see underneath the house up there, just up there. Yep. But that's probably, um, well, you can try and cut a bit off that. It's a, um, been hanging for a quite a long time. Be good. At least try and be good. If you can't be good, be careful. We'll see you later. Yum. <laughs>